Hi folks, my name is Danny. Thank you for joining me on another video here on Danny's Corner. Today I want to talk about thoughts and prayers and how we should turn this into calls for action. If you hear something in the background, that's just my AC. I hope you don't mind that. So, as you may recall, I did make a video on on the shootings or on the shooting, excuse me, that happened in Maine on Wednesday. And one of the things that I talked about were the causes of not only the shooting in Maine, but overall, what were the consequences of the violence that we have been dealing with for over 20 years? And I think it's easy for everyone to blame the current administration or the past administration for the things that were or were not done. The thing is that nobody's doing anything. Nobody has done anything ever since these things have been happening over 20 years. And so, every time that there is a shooting such as this one, regardless of where it is, everybody says, our thoughts and prayers are with the families and or victims. And I think, regardless if you are a Christian like me, or uh, an atheist, or somebody else, it's beginning to get a bit tiring because you're hiding behind thoughts and prayers just so you are, I don't know, your conscience can be cleared or something. I don't know. But today, as I said, we need to take those thoughts and prayers and make them into action. So I have other things to talk about. But I think uh, because I want to stick to 10 to 15 minutes, I don't want to make these videos too long. I want to speak about thoughts and prayers. So what's wrong with the current way that we are praying? This might not, you may want not, sorry, you may not want to hear this if you are an atheist so if you don't want to watch this video you don't have to but enable for us to be educated about every single thing i think we need to take into consideration that not every person thinks alike and so i think very differently from what other christians may think so it's not good to put us all into one basket and say all Christians think this way or all Christians are this or even all conservatives, all liberals, all Americans are like this. Just imagine if I were to say all sided folks are this way. I don't know um, a lot of people. There's over 300 million people in the United States. Imagine if I were to take all of those millions of people who are cited and judge them just because of what some cited folks have done to me or have done to the community. It would be unfair. So I do beg you to stay as I explain a little bit of how prayer works. And I'm not going to get to him death. Um, so here, here we go. One of the things that we need to remember is that God gave us free will. This means that we choose what to do and why we do it. So in this case, for example, we can send prayers to somebody for, uh, to comfort someone, to make sure they're at peace, and to make sure that their soul gets the rest or they get the rest that they may need. However, this is not going to help when, let's say, this week, 
there was a shooting? What about next week if there's one? Two weeks from now, a month from now, and let's say there's a string of uh, shootings across the United States. As I said on my other video, we only hear, and I'm speaking of we as a collective society, we only hear the massacres that happen and that impact more than five people or six people. Now, just imagine if we were to hear all of the local stories that involved somebody using a gun on somebody else or on a couple of people, that will definitely bring the number up from what we have it right now when it comes to uh, shootings. So it doesn't work when we say prayers are for the families, prayers are for the families, and then another shooting happens, prayers are for the families. We are diminishing our population as it is. I'm going to throw out a, a, a... It's an exaggerated scenario, a hypothetical scenario, but I think it's worth it. What would happen if all of a sudden everyone but only 100 people were to survive all of these shootings. Where I'm getting at is thoughts and prayers can only go so far. And as I said before, it's a way to hide with what we are, should be doing or what kind of things we, we should be doing. So the real problem is not you know, or, 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 or the real issue here is not, oh, your thoughts and prayers are not working. Yeah, they're not working. And I do agree when atheists say this, thoughts and prayers are not working because they're not being directed the right way. You're asking God as a Christian, you're asking God to bring peace, to bring rest, and to bring um, some sort of comfort to those victims that's what you're asking for and also again if we want this to be a nation that gets rid of all of this you say well the prayer should be then to stop violence a lot of times as christians we think that God is some sort of magician that he's going to do everything for us and we're just going to sit back and not do anything. We think because he is God, he's somehow, again, he's supposed to come down, clean all up our mess, and we're just to, ought to sit and look pretty. And that's it. So what? 200 years from now, the same thing is going to happen. Oh God, we need help. We made a mess again, and we ha need you to clean it up. 200 years more, we need help again because we made a mess. If we want to change this situation that we're living in, we need to take responsibility for our own actions. And that means that we need to once and for all say, we created the culture of gun violence. It wasn't God. It was us. It was our attitude that we're better than everybody else. And so the thing that we should do, and this is what I will end with, we need a call to action. This means that instead of our thoughts and prayers going out to God saying, you know, we are the ones to cause this. Therefore, we are supposed to clean it up and not expect God expect God to do everything for us as I said so from now on what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a letter to my governor to my mayor to the president of the United States to the vice president to my congressman to whomever it is I need to send a letter to I'm going to call whomever I need to call and make sure that they hear my voice and say pass a bill now when it comes to gun um, and violence it needs to stop and if it doesn't stop or if you don't do anything you're going to see that reflected when election day comes 
That's what should happen. Remember that these people work for each and every one of us. But they they treat us as if we're supposed to be serving them. That's what's going on. If the country does not take part in civil disobedience, which is this, again, sending letters, making phone calls, uh, somebody starting a petition to end this type of thing, things are not going to get done. We need to raise up our voice and we need to counteract that violence that was done during January 6th with uh, another movement, a movement that actually gets things done, not with violence, not with insults, but with action. Thank you very much. Take care.